Hey K-popers and welcome back to Hallyu where it's time for a brand new K-pop news update. Boy do we have a lot to talk about this week. BTS are victims of a horrible racist tirade where they were compared to COVID-19, a myriad of bullying accusations against idols comes up, Stray Kids Hyunjin goes on hiatus as a result of those allegations, tons more big news stories, and a huge number of releases to check out as well. Before we get started, a quick thank you to Hallyu's honorary producers. Hallyu's patrons get to show off their bias group right here in every video, they get to have their say in future videos and projects on the channel, and they get access to the official Hallyu Discord server where they can chat about K-pop and even listen to it together. So if you want to leave your mark on Hallyu and be a part of our growing community, come join us over on Patreon. Alright guys, let's jump right in. This is your K-pop news update for February 28th, 2021. Now let's kick off this absurdly busy week with a wild story about BTS being the victims of a disgusting racist tirade at the hands of a German radio DJ. So, this DJ, who's part of the Baron 3 network in Germany, started off making awful remarks comparing BTS to COVID-19 and saying he hopes there's a vaccine for them soon. And if that wasn't enough, he went on this ridiculous racist rant about their cover of Coldplay's Fix You on MTV Unplugged. I'm gonna read this statement in full because I feel that it's important to show how, in addition to how racist he's being, he's just so self-centered. So, brace yourselves because this is what he said. Nothing against South Korea. You can't accuse me of xenophobia just because this boy band is from the South. I have a car from South Korea. I have the coolest car ever. I drive a South Korean car with a six cylinder, twin turbocharger, four wheel drive, all the bells and whistles, and a top speed of 270. Korea rules. Well, South Korea. But BTS and BTS, yes, they actually have an MTV unplugged now with a boy band unplugged. That alone is paradoxical, yes? And then these, these little f-wits brag about the fact that they covered Fixie from Coldplay, where I say, this is blasphemy, and that's what I say as an atheist. This is sacrilege. For this, you'll be vacationing in North Korea for the next 20 years. So I don't think there's really much I need to say here. That is a pretty awful thing to say in general. And the network did issue an apology. However, in the apology, they seemed to imply that his statements were being misinterpreted and that they weren't completely racist. And not only that, but the DJ later shared posts on Facebook accusing listeners of themselves being racist instead of him, which is just totally unacceptable. Thankfully, several Western artists did jump to their defense, including Max, Love, and Halsey, who collaborated with them. But this definitely highlights just how serious the anti-Asian racism problem has become in light of the pandemic. Now unfortunately, that wasn't the only wild thing to happen this week in K-pop, as seemingly out of nowhere, the floodgates opened on a ridiculous number of bullying accusations against idols. Now let me start by saying this. I do my best every single week to avoid pushing any of my opinions on serious issues onto you guys and only report on things that have serious substance. In a lot of these cases, we really don't know much of anything, and frankly, we shouldn't, as this is personal for any victims and their perpetrators. Anyone can make a post online alleging an incident, anyone can hop online and corroborate it, and anyone can pretend to be involved and jump into the defense of the accused as well. So while I'm going to briefly mention all the allegations I know of from this week, I'm only going to really talk about ones where there seems to be actual developments beyond initial allegations and reports from labels. I think it's really important that we all do our best to not dismiss anything that comes out, but also not to take it as truth right away until it's been proven or disproven, and so I'm going to try to do that here. So, just to highlight how filled this week was with bullying allegations, here are the idols who were accused of something this week. Stray Kids Hyunjin, G Idol Sujin, Everglow's Asia, Seventeen's Mingyu, Luna's Chu, and Itzy's Leah were all accused of various things this week including school violence, bullying, and even sexual harassment in the case of Seventeen's Mingyu. So, as you can imagine, just about all these idols' respective labels came out with statements refuting any allegations and preparing to take legal action. And in the case of Luna's Chu, the accuser has already issued an apology for their accusation. So I'm only going to talk more about two of these instances and we'll start with G-Idol's Sujin. Now both Cube and Sujin both came out denying any such accusation of bullying, which were mostly focused on one incident in particular against an actress by the name of So Shine. Between the sheer number of people coming forward to provide testimony for this and the fact that an alleged victim's older sister actually went to Cube to meet with the staff there, there's likely more to the story. Additionally, G Idol ended up cancelling a Neighbor Now appearance early in the week due to this controversy, but again, I think it's unfair to take a side for or against Sujin this early on. Now unfortunately, all signs are pointing to allegations being true against Stray Kids Hyunjin, and this really is the main story here of the week. So like the other idols, Hyunjin was accused of various incidents of bullying in school. Where the story differentiates itself though is in the reaction by both Hyunjin and JYP Entertainment. We first found out that Itzy's Yeji would be substituting in for Hyunjin as the MC for Show Music Corps this week, which was the first red flag that something else was going on here. Hyunjin then issued a handwritten apology on Instagram in which he began by saying, First of all, I sincerely apologize to the people hurt by my wrong words and actions as a student. 
I'm embarrassed looking back at my actions from when I was even more lacking than now, and I have no excuses. I realize that my words and actions had hurt others at a time when I did not know how to be considerate of them. Although it's too late, I will deeply reflect on my actions. In my view though, the damning evidence came from JYP's official statement. In it, they revealed that they had met with many people involved in the situation and were in agreement that the original accusations were in fact true. Then they ended the statement with this line, We will do our best to make more careful efforts in the process of selecting trainees and artists. That is a very strong statement from the label and it subtly implies that they made a mistake choosing Hyunjin as a trainee in the first place. And then JYP took it a step further, sharing another statement in which they revealed Hyunjin would be going on hiatus. They said in part, Hyunjin will take the time to self-reflect after halting all of his activities as a celebrity. This certainly leaves Hyunjin's future in Stray Kids in limbo as it seems that they've been taking a very strong stance with this particular scandal. Do you think there's going to be permanent fallout from this for Hyunjin? I'd love to hear what you guys think down in the comments. Now after all of that, I think we need a feel-good news story and here is a great one from this week. So nearly a decade after their debut, Brave Girls has earned their first number one song on the Bugs chart. Their song roll on past IU Celebrity, Blackpink's Love Sick Girls, BTS's Dynamite, and every other song to take the top spot earlier this week. From what I can tell, what happened here is that this video got posted on February 23rd with Minyoung even commenting on the video. It racked up millions of views and seems to have sparked some serious hype around the song. So for K-pop fans who remember the infamous Honey fan cam that earned EXID their first music show win, this is pretty much a second incarnation of that. Either way, congratulations to the girls, they must be thrilled with this number one song. And of course, I'm obligated to mention the bombshell reveal that we got from Dispatch this week that G-Dragon and Blackpink's Jennie are dating. I released a breaking news video about this just hours after the reveal with tons of information in it, so definitely go check that out if you want the full story. But as Dispatch reported, Jenny and G-Dragon have apparently been dating for over a year and even more wild is that YG has been in on it. YG's official statement was, quote, As this pertains to their private lives, it is not possible to confirm the news. And on top of that, according to Dispatch, YG's staff and managers have been involved in keeping the secret all this time. As I mentioned in my previous video, I think this is a really good sign that the K-pop dating rules of old are finally starting to be relaxed in the big four labels. Either way, I wish the very best to the happy couple, and hey, if you haven't rewatched G Dragon's MV for that XX recently, you might want to. It's very interesting in light of this new reveal. Alright, now let's finally get to the new releases that we got this week because there were a ton of them to enjoy. I don't think I dare start anywhere else except with the legendary SM boy group Shiny. Everyone say it with me Shiny's back. Here's a latest track called Don't Call Me. On and Off are back with a hyper-futuristic MV for their new song, Beautiful Beautiful. Ho Sung Hyun, Kid Millie, and Gecko got together on Uh Uh, a very high production quality rap MV. And Flying's Lee Sung Hyub had his solo debut this week under the stage name J Don. This is Clicker. I got a sick flow, I got a quicker Girl, the up, see, girl, go the mood Kimbo are back this week with Inside, an intriguing and seemingly horror-inspired comeback. <laughs> Sunmi drops Tail this week, a very provocative and edgy comeback from the soloist. <laughs> And they got some help from NCT's Chun Li in this release called Too Good. If you like Dreamcatcher, you'll love this brand new girl group debut by Pixie. This is their debut song, Wings. We are back with this epic track called All or Nothing. Big Naughty depicts a crazy story surrounding a cyber attack in his latest MV for Joker. I hope you've got tissues nearby because CL released this memorial song for her mother who recently passed away. This is Wish You Were Here. And 
and last but not least, One Ho is back with part two of his solo debut album and this track, Lose, in which he is not afraid at all to show off his body. As always, let me know what your favorite songs from the week are down in the comments. My pick for this week has to be CL's Wish You Were Here. As much as I want to pick Shiny, some things are bigger than K-pop, and CL's heart-wrenching, authentic tribute to her late mother is on a whole other level. Alright, now let's get back to the news where we found out that Day6 are working on a new album. The plan for them is to release the album as a full group in April. In some rather upsetting news, Tiara Soyeon had a stalker break into her home. The stalker was waiting for her when she got home and was apprehended and brought to the police station afterwards. Now apparently this is the same stalker that's been following her since 2011 and has even made some death threats in the past, and her label is now taking legal action to protect her from this dangerous individual. FX's Luna has created her own entertainment agency. The company is called Greta Entertainment, but so far she's shared very little besides that, except for this short animation. We've got more info on V's upcoming mixtape, and it is good news for ARMYs. The mixtape will have 13 songs on it. I can't wait to hear what Taehyung has been working on. Infinite's Kim sung Ki will not be renewing his contract with Wilm Entertainment. sung Ki revealed this news on AV Live today, saying he'll release one final album under the label and reassuring fans that this does not mean that Infinite is disbanding. The Legends a will be releasing a special fan song. The release will celebrate their 10th anniversary as a group, and so it will be out on April 19th. And speaking of Legends, Dasselm hinted in a now-deleted post that Sistar may be coming back with a new album this year. So for those of you who are following along at home, that's a shiny comeback, SNSD rumors, 2NE1 rumors, an Aping comeback, and now Sistar rumors. Is the year 2021 or 2012? Exos Chanyeol will be enlisting in the military very soon. SM released a statement sharing that the official date of his enlistment is now March 29th and said there would not be any special events leading up to it. Rookie Girl Group Weekly are keeping a strong pace with another comeback. They revealed this week they'll be dropping some new music in March. Guhara's father has won his legal case against her birth mother for unpaid child support. The details of the case show that the mother didn't even attend the hearing and only sent her lawyer, a move that is completely on brand for the deadbeat parent. And speaking of court rulings, Himchan of BAP fame was sentenced to 10 months in prison for sexually assaulting a girl while out in Gyeonggi province in July of 2018. P-Nation's next comeback will be rapper Jessie. She's scheduled to make her comeback on March 17th. In a follow-up to a news story a few weeks ago, the family of Twice's Chewy will not be pressing charges on the housekeeper who stole autographs goods from their home. Obviously, we don't know the whole story here, so I assume it was handled among themselves outside of a courtroom. We got some unfortunate news for Barry Good fans like me. Soyul and Gowen have left Barry Good after the contracts with JTG Entertainment expired. Much like with AOA, these two members leaving pretty much spells the end of the group unofficially, and though I am saddened by that, I wish them all the best going forward. And for those of you who don't know, Barry Good's song Don't Believe is actually the intro song for this channel, so you can be sure that Barry Good will live on through Hallyu. Congratulations are in order for Blackpink. Their MV for Doo Doo Doo, Doo has hit a staggering 1.5 billion views on YouTube. Alright, now let's talk about what happened on music shows because we had two really big stories this week. The first story was undoubtedly Kong Daniel, who dominated music shows this week. His new song Paranoia took four wins, earning the trophy on every single show but Music Bank and Ikigayo. And that leads us to the second story, which is, you guessed it, BTS. The Bangtan Boys won their 31st music show for Dynamite on Music Bank this week, tying the 1991 song Invisible Love by Shin Sung Hoon for the all-time record for most wins with a single song. And IU capped off the historic week by taking another win for her song Celebrity. Alright K-popers, you're officially caught up on everything going on in the K-pop world. Let me know how you feel about this week's news and new music down in the comments. And if you want to get caught up with the K-pop world while having a ton of fun every single week, make sure that you're subscribed right here to Hallyu. 